one of the main concepts in all of calculus is the idea of how a secant line relates to the tangent line. Suppose we have a function, and it just looks something like this. I'm going to make it a pretty nice and easy function. Um, and let's suppose we have two points. All right, so now let's call this point right here A. And let's say for some reason we are trying to find the slope of this function. I'm going to call this function f at x. And let's say for some reason I'm trying to find the slope of f at the point A. Okay, so that, and that's a big question in calculus. What is the slope of a function at a specific point? And one of the things that we've already seen is that we can use the idea of a secant line to kind of approximate the average slope or the average velocity. All right, so one of the things we could do is we could just take another point, B, and we can construct a secant line. All right, and you might remember secant line cuts the function. And this would approximate it. Okay, so the approximate would be f at b minus f at a divided by b minus a, all right? But one of the ways that we can go through and get a better approximation is to pick a different point. Let's call it c and try to get a different secant line. And so we could just go through. And this is a better approximation, all right? So a little bit better would be f at c minus f at a divided by c minus a. And how could we get an even better approximation? Well, couldn't we just pick another point that was almost next to it, okay? And we could draw another secant line, all right? And this would probably be even better. So even better, and if I call that point d for some reason, that would be, f at d minus f at a divided by d minus a. And you can see where we're going with this. One of the ways that we can go through and try to approximate the slope at a specific point on a function is to just kind of move in. So notice what we did was we started with b, and then we kind of moved to c, and then we moved to d. We could even pick even closer points. All right, It's just up to us as to how close we would like to get to this. Right? Now, ultimately, what's happening is each of these lines is a secant, okay? So this is a secant slope, this is a secant slope, this is a secant slope. Now, ultimately, what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to go through and be able to get to some, the instantaneous slope, okay? And remember, all these secants are average velocities, okay? So this one, this one, and this one is an average velocity over a span, right? But what about the instantaneous, okay? So one of the things that might be really helpful is, what is the instantaneous velocity at point A, right? And that would, it's pretty good using this secant slope, all right? But what we can do is we can just keep using the secant slopes and eventually guess. So we're gonna guess using um, points that are really close together. Um, in other words, A and D would be two points that are really close together. And eventually we are going to guess something called a tangent line. And the tangent line means that it touches at exactly one point, okay? So tangent line touches at one point and it gives us the instantaneous velocity. A secant line is going to cut through two points, okay? So tangent, by the way, means touching. Secant means to cut, all right? So secare and tangens, um, just derivations of the words. And again, what the secant line does is it gives us the average velocity. 
So knowing all of this, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're basically going to expand upon the problem that we looked at before. And this is one of the problems you guys might see in my math lab. So we're taking a look at a really simplistic function. Let's say f at x equals minus 2x squared. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to do exactly what we looked at in the previous. We'd like to make a table of secant lines and eventually get to a tangent line that x equals 2. And we're going to start with this basic interval. All right? <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through this, and then I'm going to show you in my math lab how to go through and try to guess this. So we have our function. And remember our slope formula. Okay, so um, we're going to say m secant is going to be equal to f at b minus f at a divided by b minus a. And I'll flip to the calculator. I'll illustrate how to do this. So to set this up, it's going to be minus 2 times 2 square minus minus 2 times 1 square divided by 2 minus 1. Now, let me flip to the calculator just to make sure everybody knows how to put this into the calculator. Um, and this one's pretty easy. We could probably do this one really easily without the calculator. But just to make sure, um, first of all, I'm going to compute the numerator. So I'm going to say minus 2, parenthesis, 2 square, and then minus a minus 2 times 1 square. So that's negative 6, which is the numerator. And I know you guys don't need to do this, but 2 minus 1, at least for this problem, is 1. And then negative 6 divided by 1 is negative 6. All right, so if we go back to where we were doing our work, the numerator we saw was negative 6. The denominator is 1. And so what that means is that negative 6 is the average velocity on the interval from 1 to 2 of f. Okay, so this is the average velocity of f over the span 1 to 2. All right. Now, let's go into my math lab. And what we're going to notice is that we're going to have to keep doing this over and over and over again. All right, so I'm going to share my math lab screen. Okay. Which where it is. So let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Sorry, there it is, it just appeared all of a sudden. Okay, so sorry for the delay. And remember, we just computed that this was negative six. Right? It's a good thing it's correct. Now, notice what happens is this time it changes to 1.5. Okay, not a big deal, because all we have to do is just punch it in the calculator. I'm going to punch it in one more time just to illustrate what to do with this one. So let me show the calculator one last time, and then we're just going to go right through the list for the rest of them. Um, I can just compute them really quickly. So for this one, we're going to use the exact same formula, negative 2 times 2 squared minus negative 2. But remember this time, the value of A is 1.5 squared. Okay. Now this is our numerator, and the denominator is 2 minus 1.5. And finally, what we're going to do is divide. So we take negative 3.5, which is the numerator, dividing it by 0.5. That's going to be 7, or negative 7, excuse me. And I'm going to flip back. We're going to enter that into the My Math Lab. Um, by the way, notice that it says round to the nearest thousandth if necessary or as needed. This one, obviously, we don't have to. Okay, so it tells me I have a good job. So now I feel good about myself. Um, 1.9, we could do the calculator exactly again, all right, 7.8. So again, I'm just going through and, and expediting this just because I'm assuming that you all know the process at this point. Um, 1.99, negative 7.98, and then negative 7.998. All right, now, what is happening here? All right. Well, doesn't it look like each time that we keep adding another 9 
to the decimal place, it looks like that we're getting closer to what value? Well, it looks like it's getting closer to negative eight. And that's just what we're doing is we're moving those two points closer together. And these are all secant slopes. <clears throat> what we're looking for is we're looking for the tangent slope. We don't know for certain that it's negative eight, but from this table of values, we're pretty, we're moderately certain of that. And so we're just gonna, it says round to the nearest integer, I'm gonna enter negative eight, and it tells me I'm excellent, or at least that my response is excellent, okay? And so that's the, the relationship between the secant and the tangent line. Now let me flip back for just one more moment, because I do wanna go through and explain something that's gonna connect to the next lesson. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what happens if the two points lay on top of one another, all right? So what if we just used A and A? So I'm gonna go back, uh, I'm gonna draw this really quickly. And what if for some reason we had our function and we had our point A, but what happens if we just used A and another point, A, the exact same point twice. Well, wouldn't that give us in our slope formula, so our M secant, that would be equal to F at A minus F at A divided by A minus A, which is zero over zero. Well, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So that's why we can't go through and immediately find the tangent slope, all right? So in fact, because the points are the same, this wouldn't be the secant line anymore. This would be m tangent, all right? But we can't do that using the slope formula, which is why we have to use this point that's really, really close, okay? So remember we used like um, 1.999 or we used another point d. Ultimately, what we're looking for is what happens if they start bumping up against one another, all right? And that's actually the idea of a limit. All right. The limit suggests that it, this can't ever happen. But what happens if we approach that? All right. So in other words, the notation that we're looking at, and then this is what we're going to be doing in the next section, is the limit as x approaches a of f at a minus f at x divided by a minus x. All right. So we can't actually substitute A into there, but we can approach it, okay? So that's the idea of the limit to where we're trying to ultimately get extremely close, if not right on top of A. And eventually that's going to give us our tangent slope, which is going to be able to give us our tangent line, which is going to give us the instantaneous velocity, which is going to give us the exact slope, all right? So this is the big picture concept. And this is what we're going to be doing throughout the rest of chapter two, is just working through the idea of what a limit is.